Hello and welcome to the show. I'm your host Zulf and today I'm going to be talking to you about why I stopped using the Canon EOS webcam utility tool. If you know me, you know I did a hell of a lot of videos about explaining the Canon EOS webcam tool. We had loads of people have difficulty with it and originally people weren't aware you could use the tool on an older camera and I tested it and it worked. So what we did there is let me show you quickly what I did. So you see I've got uh, old cameras and Canon EOS webcam. I did one about the bootstrapper. So the error people are getting when they're installing it. I did a video about make it a webcam. I did loads explaining questions and answers and tips of how to help you make your Canon camera into a webcam. So what's the main thing here? The main thing to remember is if you have a camera and you want to make it a webcam, you're not live streaming at high qualities, you're fine. However, when will the challenges come? The main challenge here is going to be if you want to use this camera as a live streaming camera and you are happy with under 720p, kind of close to 720p, it's all right. But you'll know I had to add it into my software. We got those odd black bars. Remember those? I did a video about how to get rid of black bars on that uh, software. So if you're still using it, check that video and the cards. I'll have like a whole playlist of all the EOS Canon webcam that I've been looking at. So on this camera, I think it's important to remember if you use it as a webcam, you're going to have to do a lot of jiggery pokery to make it look decent. And when I say decent, like widescreen view. So we'll keep that in mind. But the main additional thing that we did have an issue with for the EOS webcam utility tool is firstly, it was crashing. It crashed quite a few times and the reason for that was it's actually a software that enables the camera to be viewable by USB. So if you add it into OBS, what you'll notice is you'll add a camera in and then if you had a problem or you wanted to add another camera in a live stream to show another view, you had to double click on the camera to change the source and the camera would just freeze up. So that was something that I was aware of and I was working around. So at any point I was live streaming or recording video, I made sure I put all my other cameras on first because you know I've got multiple views on my setup like standing desk as well. So with that, what will happen is if you set it up last, turn in, I had a USB plugin. I used to turn this webcam utility on last, which meant everything else was set up and this came on and then I was all right. However, people are still having issues with the EOS webcam utility tool. Now, the main thing here was it was designed to help people to be able to use some type of video function and it perf perfectly performs for that if you have one camera. But if you're going to get a bit more pro and make it more live stream multi-camera angles, then you need to also inf update the infrastructure around it. So you'll know I picked up a cam link and I started uh, live streaming in better quality and more reliable quality. So the main difference here is going to be if you're just streaming for yourself, this video is not going to probably help. You don't need to change. But if you're going to get serious and you want to get more professional and you don't want issues during your stream, that's when you need to update to more reliable things. So now I can see on my channel, I do a lot about you don't need expensive gear. That is right. However, if you want to make this more professional, you have to weigh up what you're spending on your gear versus what you're getting back in return. And in comparison, it's still not expensive. If you get the right gear, for example, that camera I'm using with this card and live streaming is under a thousand pounds, probably less than that. Actually, no, yeah, close to a thousand pounds because I got a custom lens on there. So you're looking at maybe 500 pounds for the camera body, 250SL camera, SL3, 250D. I've got 50 millimeter 1.4 lens on there, which will take you up to about 800. Then you've got the Elgato, about 100, that's 900, and a few cables and the dummy battery, that's a thousand pounds. So you've got a camera ready for live streaming and then you can do your additional live stream angles like I do all the time. So the main thing here is why did I use or why did I stop using Canon EOS webcam utility tool? It's just a bit of a nightmare. I've done loads of videos to help people, but I'm quite, what's the word? Probably anal. I will go through a setup and say, okay, I'm using it in this setup. Is it working for me? Yes, it is. Okay, it's not working in this scenario. Okay, how can I get around that? Do I need to buy something? Do I need to change something? So I think of it analytically, step by step. But a lot of people will just plug it in, say it's not working, oh, it doesn't work, and they leave it. But I'll kind of find a solution to that issue and then share it. So if you see or have an issue with your EOS webcam utility tool, firstly, check out my playlist and view that, watch all the videos, because a lot of those tips and tricks helped me through my journey. And I use the camera for the best part of two, two years. And I made a, a close to five, six hundred videos on it with that camera. So it's not going to stop you as long as you're willing to work around the quirks. It's not perfect. If you want a perfect setup, buy a better camera, buy a HDMI capture card and a camera that does live view 
out of your camera, like clean live view with focusing on your face because that would be important. You don't want it to be blurry. So I think that's a nice overview to explain why I stopped using it. What have I moved on to? I've explained a bit about what I moved on to as well. But I think if you're currently struggling with a webcam uh, in using a DSLR camera, look at the alternative options. Also, keep an eye on webcams. There are good quality webcams out there that you can use. What I will do is I'll link you to another video here that I made explaining the cameras that you should be looking at if you want to buy a live streaming camera and things you should watch out for. I've got like five or six cameras that are in there, uh, key cameras that you could look at. So keep an eye on that and I'll see you on that video. Take care.